Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of The Consulog, episode number 33. I got a good episode for you this coming week. This is uh, the week of March 26th through April 1st, the first episode of April. I hope you're ready for a fun month. I know I am. Uh, I'll tell you more about that probably in this coming week, why I'm so excited about April, but uh, stay tuned for that later. But uh, let's not really dilly-dally and start talking about the things in the past week of JavaScript that you should know about today. So let's begin. <laughs> First thing out of the gate, let's talk about how React.js, the framework that is loved and used by many, had a brand new release this past week, version 16.3.0. If you add those numbers together, you get 19, which means nothing. But this release was pretty cool. It has no real changes. So if you are using 16 uh, through 16.3, you don't have to worry about actually changing anything at all. Uh, the big things that 16.3 is doing is starting to add more functionality to make React more of a framework that you you can use without having the framework itself get in the way of the applications that you make. So what does that mean? Uh, they added a lot of new features to 16.3 that make you have an easier time to actually use React when you're actually building larger applications. For example, there is now a new create ref API that makes it easier for you to actually grab refs. Uh, if you used refs in the past before with strings, you'll know that they've deprecated that. They've now added a way to actually make it a little bit more easy as well. They use this new uh, forward ref API, which is a thing that you'll use if you actually make higher order components yourself. Day-to-day, uh, -day you probably won't use that, but library authors will actually use that and it'll make you a little, have an easier time actually getting a reference to the internal component if you're, if you're wrapping things with styled components per se. Um, and the big new feature that they added in React 16.3 is a new context API. And uh, wouldn't you know it, you're in luck that yours truly here actually made a comprehensive video talking all about how you can use this new official context API. So if you are curious about that, check it out. It's about a 15 minute long video, but it gives you a nice in-depth understanding about how to actually use this feature to your advantage. So there is a lot of new features in that. I don't wanna to get too much in depth about that because it's a big thing that probably has its own episode that needs to be dedicated to it itself, but 16.3 is out. Uh, another big thing is that the component lifecycle methods are going to be changing in an upcoming version, but uh, we don't have to worry about that for this episode. I'll talk about that probably more in depth in another episode. But again, React 16.3 is out. Check it out, upgrade if you want. It should be an easy upgrade if you're already using 16.0 or 16.2 or anything before then as well. Sweet. You heard me talk about this in the past, but I am so excited that this past week, iOS 11.3 was released. And I know personally, I just love upgrading things, so that was exciting for my own personal reasons. But also what's very exciting about iOS 11.3 is that now shipping by default in iOS 11.3 is support for service workers. And the big part of the service, service workers API is the cache API. And what does that mean? It means that you can actually now have a easy and guaranteed way to make offline first applications. There's some caveats with the iOS implementation in terms of how you can only store 50 megabytes and things will get purged if you haven't used the application in a couple of weeks. But to actually have support for server workers in iOS by default is just going to be huge for most mobile web application developers. Also, iOS versions usually update pretty fast. You don't have to actually worry about people not having the newest version. So you actually can start probably adopting and adding service workers to your websites uh, already. I'm actually intending to add service workers for support for the console log website, also for my own personal blog, just to get that special advantage of that there so that those applications can work even when you're offline. So I'm very excited about this. Just again, getting mobile web closer to native applications. So try to make that gap as small as possible, but I'm very excited that this is now finally out. So uh, if you are on iOS, upgrade. If you're not, start actually adding service workers to your applications to take advantage of this awesome new feature. In the land of GraphQL, we had a fun little blog post about the next version of GraphQL. Uh, the current re release of GraphQL, the uh, JavaScript implementation release, is version 0.13.2. And the graph, uh, the blog post talks about how the next version of GraphQL will be 14. And that is mostly to signify that GraphQL is production ready. There's already many companies out there using GraphQL in production and to actually have them go from a uh, proper semver major version is actually signifying that yes, GraphQL is ready to be used in production environments. This is the same thing that actually reacted uh, two years ago now where they went from 0 0.14 to 15. So it's just trying to be a little bit more semantic and a little bit more honest about what the versions actually mean in terms of the functionality of the library. So 
GraphQL 0 0.13 to 14, that's awesome. Makes me have a little bit of an easier time trying to justify to myself using this uh, technology in a production environment. So very cool. That would always be a fun little upgrade to go from 0 0.13 to 14. That's always fun to do. Last but not least, let's talk about the world of machine learning, something I don't really talk about that much. I don't really know much about machine learning, so I don't have much to say about machine learning, but there was a big release. So the biggest, one of the biggest frameworks in machine learning is this thing called TensorFlow. And there has been implications of this in Python, I believe in Java, other languages where you can actually use this library made by Google that actually makes it easier to use and create machine learning applications. This past week, they finally brought out a implementation of TensorFlow to JavaScript, meaning that you can actually use TensorFlow in the browser, which is very cool. You can actually make some really smart, fun machine learning games. So if you are curious about machine learning, though, there is now less of an excuse to start jumping into actually learning it because you can actually play within your lingua franca of choice, which is JavaScript, to actually use TensorFlow for that. So I'm intending to try to poke around for a little bit to see understand well, what the whole thing is with machine learning. There's a lot of concepts there that I don't really understand, but uh, very curious to actually start getting a little bit more context around what machine learning is, especially when I can have it be in the language that I'm already mostly comfortable with, which is JavaScript. So TensorFlow in JavaScript to your browsers today. And so that was your episode of the content log. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, enjoyed this episode as well. Curious to hear your thoughts about what you enjoyed about this episode. If you reached the end, things that you actually enjoyed uh, hearing about more, things you hear, hear about less, uh, anything I can do to make this show as enjoyable for you as possible. Uh, hope you are having a good April and I will talk to you again next week. Bye-bye. This thing on? This thing on? Oh yeah, so, uh, sorry, I know that this episode was a little bit out of focus sometimes. I was trying to see if this autofocus of this camera actually worked, and uh, surprise, surprise, it did not. So, I apologize for the autofocus, it won't be out of focus again, because I can actually just keep things in manual, make everything nice and crystal clean. Am I in focus? I can't tell. Looking at the screen, looking at you, I don't know. See you again next week. Bye-bye.